So our guidelines at the moment are really uh, designed to help people manage their smell loss at home. And that's a lot of what this page is about. Trying to give you the information together with uh, a healthcare practitioner, manage your smell loss in the early stages. It may mean that after three months you might want to seek a referral to an ENT surgeon or other smell loss expert for further treatment or investigation. And we imagine that for most of those people they're going to deliver this via teleconference or a telephone call or something like that. Again, trying to reduce uh, the need for face-to-face -face meetings for the time being. We're not going to recommend having imaging, so that's like an MRI scan or a CT scan, because it's unlikely to show anything, um, anything different to what we suspect. And again, we're trying to reduce the impact on the NHS for the time being until this is all over. The one thing that we would recommend, though, is smell training. Olfactory training has been shown over and over again to help people with almost all types of smell loss and we would once again emphasize that this is the way forward for almost all people who have lost their sense of smell. For instructions on smell training please see the other videos available on this page. For most people who lose their sense of smell from COVID-19 uh, the prognosis is good. Usually it's characterized by a sudden smell loss and an equally sudden recovery roughly two to three weeks later. And for most people, the good news is that's what's going to happen. Your sense of smell will go and then it will come back. Unfortunately, for a small group of people, their sense of smell will go, but it will take much longer to come back. And we think that happens to about 10% of the people who lose their sense of smell from this virus. The prognosis over the longer term, sort of medium eight weeks, uh, is slightly worse. If you've lost your sense of smell for longer, it's going to take longer to come back and may take some months to recover. Unfortunately for some pe people, it may never fully get back to normal. Some people notice that they have to rebuild their sense of smell, making a new normal. Things may no not smell like they used to, but they will smell like themselves in the new normal smell paradigm. What we do know is that for almost everybody, smell training is going to help. It will give you the bricks to rebuild your sense of smell. Here's some advice about medical management of smell loss in COVID-19. The one thing that everybody should be doing is smell training. We know overwhelmingly that the evidence from people with other post-viral smell loss syndromes is if they do smell training, they do it regularly, they do it often and they do it every, for every day for three months. Please see the other videos on the site about this your sense of smell will recover better than if you didn't. And if you're going to do smell training, you need to do it regularly, every day, twice a day, for at least three months. Steroid nose sprays are sensible. They reduce the, the swelling inside the nose, reduce inflammation. Uh, please see the other videos on this site for uh, information on how to use a, smell, a steroid nose spray if you have been prescribed one. Steroid nose drops can be useful to reduce inflammation in the nose. There are special techniques for getting it up to the olfactory cleft, which is the part of the nose that does the smelling. Please see the other videos here on the Kaiteki method and how to do that. And nasal washing. I think everybody who has a nose should be washing their nose out twice a day with saline rinse. We know it reduces the uh, amount of chemicals in the nose that cause inflammation. It reduces the allergens. It reduces the pollutants. And it's safe. It's uh, non-invasive and doesn't really have any side effects. We also have videos on the on site on how to do that. Oral steroids, the current recommendations are not to have oral steroids because of the presumed immunosuppressive effect. That means that the steroids reduce the ability of your immune system to fight the virus. There are some studies now looking at people who have very bad infections, who need to be ventilated with a tube uh, into their lungs. That shows that the steroids are actually protective in that, in that state. So uh, that, that advice may change, but at the moment we don't recommend oral steroids. A lot of people, when they have a problem with the blocked nose, the first thing they do is to go to the pharmacy and buy an over-the-counter decongestant, a nose unblocking spray. And these can be useful for a day or two, but if you continue using them, the nose essentially gets addicted to the decongestant and requires it to stay open. And eventually, even the decongestant stops working and the nose is completely blocked and it's very difficult to unblock. For that reason, we recommend against using decongestant nasal sprays for longer than one or two days. If 
your nose is blocked. And this is true for all nasal conditions. Decongestant tablets similarly are not good for long-term use. They can affect the heart and other organs. And I don't think they're as effective in unblocking the nose anyway. What does work, we think, is vitamin A drops. There's some evidence to suggest that this, is, this will support the regeneration of the lining of the nose and help the uh, nerve cells grow again. There's no solid evidence, but some basic science has shown that they might have an effect in rebuilding the, the nerve cells in the lining of the nose. Uh, the, they're available um, on mail order, and, and Absin had the instructions in translation available on this page. Vitamin A drops may be helpful. There's no solid evidence. We haven't looked at them in patients with post-viral smell loss, but there's some basic science that suggests they will help with the regeneration of the nerve cells with the within the lining of the nose. They're, they come in two brands and need to be ordered via mail order, usually from Germany or Austria. And if you need a translation of the instructions, they're very available on this page. There are other food supplements that are sometimes recommended for people who've lost their sense of smell. One of these is alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams taken once a day. Some studies that have shown that this may benefit people and improve their, their smell recovery, but there's no really solid evidence to support their recommendation. Another supplement that may help is omega-3 uh, fish oils, about two grams a day, 2,000 milligrams just usually one, one um, capsule, which has been shown to help people's uh, sense of smell recovery after surgery to the area within the nose that does smelling. This may help recovery and is unlikely to have any side effects, so if you feel like taking it, you might as well. So what's different about COVID-19 and other forms of olfactory loss after a viral infection? It's important to realize that all of the information we have at the moment comes from before the pandemic. All the tests we did, all the trials that we did, all the evidence we look at comes from people who've lost their sense of smell from sometimes a coronavirus, but most of the time we don't really know. And so there are some ways in which this virus and the smell loss and taste loss that it causes are different to the pattern that we saw before. And it may be that things are slightly different with this disease. Certainly, post-viral olfactory loss before COVID was very rarely associated with taste changes or changes in what we call chemesthesia, chemical sensation. Uh, that's the, uh, what the food scientists call mouthfeel, burning from chilies or crunching or um, what is also called trigemination, which is mediated by an entirely different nerve. All of those things are now in COVID far more prominent than they, than they have been before. Certainly, as somebody who's seen a lot of people with uh, these kind of sensory changes, it was almost always purely a smell loss they came to the clinic with. But now we're seeing people who've lost their sense of taste, who have a blocked nose when their nose, when you look in it, is completely open, feel a burning in the nose uh, when there's no obvious inflammation, those kind of things. So we are seeing a slightly different spectrum here than we are used to. And it may be that the things that we, we know from uh, post-viral smell loss before might have to be revisited once we've had time to really get a handle on, on this disease. It is what, what is called a polymorphous infection. It is affects all sorts of, of systems in ways that we didn't expect when it first started. Some people want to know why COVID seems to cause smell loss of one type or another. So we know that most people lose their sense of smell and they get their complete sense of smell back suddenly within two or three weeks. Whereas other people might lose their sense of smell and it doesn't come back within weeks and requires rebuilding with olfactory training, for instance. We think what's going on is the first is just a simple mechanical obstruction, like putting a clothes peg on top of your nose. You're blocking the olfactory cleft, even though the rest of the nose might be clear, the bit that does the smelling gets blocked, and if it's blocked, the smells can't get in and you can't detect them. When that unblocks, suddenly the sense of smell comes back. But I suspect that if this blocking goes on for a long time, there's a lot of inflammation. A lot of those chemicals that are released in the inflammatory process are toxic to cells. They damage the cells around them. If you do too much of that, you may damage the smell nerves 
and that is, gives you a long-standing smell loss which requires a lot longer to recover and a lot of help like the things that we've discussed on this page.